Immersion Brewing with the Hario Switch. The Hario Switch is a brewing device based on the Hario V60, which is a brewer with 60 degree angles here, one largish hole down the bottom for percolation or drip method. And what they've done is that they've created a brewer that is versatile in the sense of you can brew percolation method and also immersion. So like the Clever Coffee Dripper, which you can see in another of our videos, we've done a comparison between the two. Today, I'm gonna to take us through an immersion style brew with the Hario Switch. So like the Clever Coffee Dripper, she has the ability to be brewed immersion style, which means that you put the filter inside, coffee, ground coffee, hot water on top, and you leave her to sit. I personally love brewing immersion just because it minimizes human error in the extraction process. So if you're brewing in a busy cafe style setting or at home with a lot of distractions, it's a lot easier to get a well-balanced and delicious cup of coffee from it. So the main differences that we want to keep in mind when we're brewing with the Hario Switch is that unlike the V60, she comes in just glass. So you can have ceramic and glass Hario V60s for brewing, but this case, they're almost always glass. So if you're used to brewing with plastic, you want to bear in mind that it needs to be preheated before you brew. From a price point, if you're looking to invest in a piece of equipment for your home and you're not sure about whether you want immersion or percolation, the Hario Switch is a fantastic place to start because it allows you to to experiment with both methods. The main difference being it's a little bit more expensive than for example a plastic V60 just because of the materials and also the versatility of the brewer. So the Hario V60 is made out of glass with a silicon base. At the bottom of the cone there's a little ball bearing and this mechanism, this switch here, either lifts that ball bearing up to allow for a full percolation style brew or closed, which is how we're gonna brew with it today. The filters we're using are just your standard two size V60 brew, uh, filters from, from Hario. We're gonna be brewing water at 93 degrees based upon the SCAR International Cupping Guidelines. And our recipe today is a brew ratio of one to 18 grams. We're doing 11 grams of coffee for 200 grams of water. So the coffee we're gonna be brewing today is from El Salvador, from the farm of Lemos Bella Vista, the region of Concepcion de Ataku. It's a, a tabi variety variety coffee with a honey processing. So the types of flavors that we're hopefully going to draw out of this coffee today are very summery, summer fruits like plum and ripe apricot with a little bit of caramel and peanut. Let's see if we can get there. Our grind setting is going to be a little bit coarser than you would with your standard V60 pours and about a medium coarse, medium coarse grind setting. Let's go. Welcome to the studio. Hmm? So as I said, we're going to be grinding 11 grams of coffee. Allow time for our scales to catch up. Medium coarse, we want about medium coarse setting. All right, let's go. So yeah, let's brew. We have our ground coffee. I'm just gonna turn on my kettle to 93 degrees and we have our coffee ground to a medium coarse setting. So as I said before, the, ha the Hario switch is made out of glass, which means she needs to be preheated. This is very important. With plastic brewers, you can kind of get away with not preheating them, but with ceramic and glass, it is really important that we heat this thoroughly first. So we'll take our filter and just like a V60, we'll fold there along the seam. So we wanna open it up. This just helps it to sit a little bit more flush inside that brewer there. Take my hot water, just turn on my scale for fun. Don't really need to weigh this part, but that's fine. So yeah, just rinsing that filter. Yeah, I used to always say we rinse the filter to remove the papery flavor, but Sasa Sestik just did a little piece on how actually these filters don't really have a flavor anyway. But still, we will need to do it today just to preheat that glass brewer. So we'll just give that a little while there to heat up. Yeah, this is important because otherwise, if you are if you pour hot water into a cold brewer, that glass is immediately going to pull the water out of the brew. So you'll end up with an under-extracted, not super tasty coffee. So, so I'll run that through to heat up the glass underneath and I'll be right back. Ta-da! So tear your grinder so that now she's with everything on top, it reads zero. I'm going to pop in the 11 grams of coffee. Lovely. Level this off just because that's kind of like a pour over brew. I guess it's not absolutely necessary here, but still good to try and level out your grinds. Now I'm going to tear that off again, starting my timer. So the water's at 93 degrees. I'm going to start my timer and pour 200 grams of coffee inside. I'm going to pour still in concentric circles just because 
I don't know, I can practice my pour over method like this. Trying to get all of that crust saturated. So trying to reach 200 grams at about 30 seconds. At 45 seconds, I'm gonna give her a bit of agitation just to break that crust a little bit. It was about five times back and forth. And now we're gonna wait until three and a half minutes. We're at three minutes 15, another 15 seconds before I'll, I'll flick the swatch. Yeah, so as I was saying, the lovely thing about this is that, again, you preheat the device, put the ground coffee inside, hot water, give it a little stir, and then you can walk off. It's easier at home or in the or in the coffee or in the cafe to have like an alarm set up. So you just set the timer for your desired brew time, three minutes, three and a half minutes or four minutes, and then you walk away. As soon as she rings, you come, you push the button and you know it's gonna be okay. So a drawdown time total of about 23 seconds. So that's all right. Cool. I'll just go pump this down. Be right back. Cool, and she looks good. Coffee makes or breaks a day, huh? Fingers crossed it's a good one. Yeah, she smells lovely. Still a little bit hot, but you can already get a taste of the of the sweetness. Yeah, it's really nice. Definitely the summer fruity kind of slightly fermented, but very pleasant. Cool, so I'll just give this a minute to cool down so I can get a good idea of the flavor. So we've experimented with two different recipes today. Before filming this video, we tried out the coffee at a three minute uh, infusion instead of three and a half minutes. They're both they're both nice. It's overall, it's a really nice coffee. Like very, again, I think as I said earlier, like very summery, very fruity. There's a nice, like a, there's a nice complex acidity there. And this one's quite nice. I think I prefer this one in particular at three minutes. Still lovely though. I'd be really happy with this as my first cup. Just to note, the, the recipe that we've made today can be played with quite a lot. So our brew ratio of one gram to 18 grams, so one gram of dry coffee to 18 grams of brewing liquid, brewing water, is um, it's, it's up, this is our preference, but you can experiment with your own. If you like it a bit stronger, add a little bit less water, have a play. Find, find out where you like it. Same with the brewing temperature, same with the time for extraction. Feel free to have a play. Overall, I love immersion brewing. It really simplifies the brewing process, especially in busy or easily distractible environments such as home or in the cafe. So next week, we're gonna be looking again at the Hario Switch, but we'll be exploring the percolation style brew. We'll also be doing a side-by-side -side comparison with an immersion and a percolation style brew so that we can kind of see which flavors are heightened in each method. Should be fun, so come back for that. So do you have a Hario Switch? Do you use one at home or in your cafe? And if so, what's your favorite style of brewing? Do you brew percolation or do you brew immersion? And what's your favorite recipe? Let us know below. I think that's it for today. Thank you very much for stopping by. Remember to come back next week to see that comparison. We'll have some good fun here at the studio. And uh, yeah, have a lovely day.